get a quick understanding about what are firewalls in a network. We have understood what is a network, what is a CIDR, etc. Now we are coming into firewall. Assuming this is a network that I've got and its CIDR is 10.0.0.0 slash 16, I might have various computers within this network, which I will put as these smaller rectangles. And typically when I have a network, I want to protect it. The idea behind firewall is basically a security mechanism to protect your network. So firewall is a security mechanism for network traffic. Whenever we talk about security in the digital world, you can easily map it with what happens in the physical world. For example, if you were to consider a building, you have a security uh, man who identifies who is allowed in and who is not allowed in or who is allowed out and who is not allowed out. Same logic in a network, I can implement a firewall, which is what I am depicting here. And when I implement a firewall, this is going to act as a security mechanism as to what is going to be allowed inside in the form of what is called as ingress rules. And we can also configure what traffic is allowed to go out in the form of egress rules. When you configure these security rules, you basically specify a CIDR and protocol and the port. For example, I might say I want to have an ingress rule which will allow in this network the ability to reach from 0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 slash 0 on TCP port 80. If I'm hosting a web server public facing internet and I have a public IP on a computer and I've placed it inside this network with the help of this ingress rule, I will allow from any IP address, that is what is the meaning of 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 slash 0 on TCP protocol, port 80 is open, which means only port 80 can be reached. Whereas if I have my office network, which is also connected to this network, let's say this is a cloud network that I have, and I only want people who are available on a particular network. Let's say my office network is 192.160.0.0 slash 16. I will also want TCP port 22 to be open, which means only from source IP addresses, which are starting with 192.168, TCP 22 will be allowed. For others, it will not be allowed. Similarly, when I create egress rules, I'm going to specify what are the network communication that is allowed outwards. For example, I might say computers within this network can reach specific computers in another network. For example, I have another network in which I have got my on-premise setup, comparing this to be a cloud, and I want port 2021 on TCP to be allowed. I will also specify what is the destination CIDR. In this case, 192.168.0.0 slash 16 is the destination CIDR to which I want to allow this to go out. So using these rules, you can configure what is allowed. In general, when we talk about security, we can talk about whitelist and blacklist. Whitelist tells what is allowed, and that is what I spoke about so far. Whereas blacklist tells what is not allowed, which means everything else is allowed other than what you specifically mark as not allowed. So depending on your requirements and what your firewall allows, you can configure whitelist rules, which will only tell what is allowed. The rest is all not allowed. That's the whole idea in a whitelist. Everything else is not allowed. Whereas when you configure a blacklist based firewall, you specify what is not allowed, the rest are all allowed. 
depending on what is the firewall you're implementing and what are the options it provides, you can choose to give whitelist or backlist. But keep in mind, whitelist offers better security because you explicitly tell what is allowed, the rest is all not allowed. Whereas blacklist gives you more convenience because you don't need to go about listing hundreds and hundreds of things that you want to allow. You only stop what is not allowed and the remaining are all allowed. Similar to how when you're traveling on a road, nobody's going to check who you are and whether you're allowed or not. People are generally allowed to walk through on a road. Whereas if you're entering a building, then they might want to use a whitelist rule on the building to tell who is allowed or not allowed. Or if you go to a public location, let's say you're getting into a park, typically you use a blacklist, meaning people who are having specifics, people with a gun are not allowed inside or things like that can be given. But otherwise, you use a blacklist, which is more of convenience, but offers lesser security. But whitelist is the one that offers better security because you explicitly allow only specific to be allowed. The same thing would be available in firewalls that you implement in a cloud or in your on-prem environments.